looking great, Mrs. Driscoll. A few cans of paint, a little bit of elbow grease, and this is going to be the house of your dreams. Thanks, Dan. Hey, stop by whenever you're in the neighborhood. I will, thanks. Bye. Oh, be careful. My husband made that. I see Molly. Molly! 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 There you are. Can you believe this yard? And it's all yours. I think it's scary. Oh, no, it's not. It's just all overgrown. See these trees? They've been here a long, long time. So we'll just trim it all back and find all these wonderful little things hidden underneath. Can we call Chloe's mom? Ask her to come over for a play date? Mm, sweetie, Chloe's in Chicago, but you can see her when we go back to visit. Hey, I'm gonna go help the movers. So why don't you pick some of these beautiful flowers and bring them in the house? Okay. So here are the earnings reports, sales projections, wage breakdowns, everything you asked for. You've got a cutie? She's the number one reason we moved here. Seems like a great place to raise kids. You want to run through this stuff now? No. I want to go outside, see the real thing. Have you ever seen a primary mill like this before? Only on the day I interviewed for this job. Kelly's just got here. She'll have the first batch of illustrations ready by next week. You sure this is going to work? I'm used to shouting across the room to you. I know, but between the delivery service and the email, I'm sure everything's going to be just fine. I'm going to miss our morning coffee chat. Oh, I miss you too. Bye. Bye. Paint your hair, my beautiful creative wife. You smell like wood chips, oh, master of business. How was your first day? I'm gonna have fun bringing this one into the 21st century. You love a challenge, don't you? Yeah, I do. You sure you want to um, fix up this whole place all by yourself? Are you kidding me? It's just like heaven. I love this house. I know you do, but we can always get help. I'm sure there are plenty of contractors around out there. Uh-uh, no, I want to do it myself. I want to... Feel it come back to life. If I remember correctly, mm -hmm. that's exactly what you said about your old car. I love my old car. So you love the house, you love your car. What else do you love? I love you. Most of the time. Daddy! Daddy's home! Baby, how are you, huh? <laughs> mm. Hey, Ma. Why don't we help Suzanne put out the food, okay? Okay. All right, babe. Just then, Happy jumped to safety, fooling the nasty alligator. And Happy, Happy and, and his friends, friends were reunited and lived happily ever after. You go to sleep now. If you need us, we'll be just down the hallway. Daddy? Yes, Miss Molly? What if Mommy comes back to our old house and we're not there? This 
sweetheart. Mommy's not coming back. Do you miss her, Daddy? Of course I do, Mom. You know, some people believe that when people die and go to heaven, they watch over us all the time. Do you believe that? Yeah, I do. I love you. I love you too. How is she? She's good. You know, sometimes she gets this look like she's 80 years old. She's like that from the moment she was born. I'll never forget she turned and looked at me like she'd been here before. Sweetie, I want to have a baby soon. Whoa. That's one hell of an opening line. I know. It's just, it's just that we have our, our new home, our new life. Um, and I don't, I don't know what we're waiting for anymore. Molly's been through a lot. I really want her to be settled before she has another big change in her life. Molly is a wonderful, resilient little girl. I'm sure she would love having a little baby brother or sister. Yeah, I know she will. Okay, I'll give you three months. Not one day longer. a deal. In the meantime, how about we get in a little practice? Sleep in another room. No, it's over, Suzanne. I'm just gonna take Molly here back to her bed. No, I'm scared. I wanna stay here. Oh, yeah? Okay. Come on. Jump. Jump in. There we go. Come on. That a girl. You alright, Suzanne? Okay, I appreciate it. Thanks. Damn, eight thirty already. Honey, I gotta go. Wait, wait. What did the What did the contractor say? He says it's no big deal. He reckons the chimney got blocked at some point, and all the activity dislodged the stones. He's gonna send someone over to fix it up. Okay. Unless, of course, you want to do it yourself. Uh -huh. Very <laughs> funny. I'll be late. Don't wait up for me. Okay. Have a good day. Okay. Better package goods, consumer services, and travel. Chicago was great. But this place, this place is amazing. The primary plan takes the product right from the forest to the hardware store. This place may be old, but it still works. I'm really looking forward to turning things around, making it a competitor again. Well, you're the third guy to try. Every time we get bought out, we send in a guy like you, comes in, tries to dig us out of a hole. This time will be different, John. You wait. It hasn't been different so far. I'm so glad you liked it. You don't think it was ever done? Oh, really? Very, very hot. 
Try one of these. They're cucumber, my favorite. We used to live in Chicago. It was freezing cold there. My mommy's dead too. She had black hair. She smelled like daisies. You want a pillow? Here, take this one. I'll leave the light on so you won't be afraid of the dark. Hey, sweetie. Who are you talking to? Nobody. You know, when I was a little girl, I had a pretend friend. Her name was Linda. And she was very pretty. She had beautiful hair, just like yours. And I used to tell her all of my secrets. Do you have pretend friends, sweetie? She's not pretend. She's real. Well, of course she is. What's her name? Candace. Candace. Well, hello, Candace. It's very nice to meet you. Are you two girls ready for bed? Yes. Good. Good night, pumpkin. Good night, Candace. One for Molly, one for Daddy, one for Suzanne, and does Candace like pancakes? Candace loves pancakes. Yeah. One for Candace. Not there. That's um, Candace's chair. Candace? Her imaginary friend. I had one when I was her age. It's not that unusual. You also had a teddy bear you called Uncle Henry. A, you dissed my house, you dissed my car, and now you're dissing my bear. Let me just tighten you up a little bit tighter. I love you. I love you too. I think I'll call the school summer camp, see if they can fit her in. She needs to be around some real kids. Good. Glad we discussed it. Hi, Molly. We are so glad that you've come to play with us today. Come with me. This is Megan. She's my daughter, and she's going to be your special helper today. Show Molly her copy. Will you, mate? Okay. I'll pick you up after lunch, okay? Fine. I see you guys live close to us. Maybe we can carpool when she gets settled in. Hmm. That'd be great. Yeah, thank you. Um, Julie, if you need me, just, just give me a call, okay? Don't worry. I'll take extra good care of this little sweetie. Thank you so much for volunteering your time. Ah, oh, the pleasure's all mine. The residents are really looking forward to slapping that paint around. Well, you know, you're never too old to be an artist. Besides, I live just down the road and practice with my neighbors. I can't find my sister. Good morning, Dora. Good to see you up getting your exercise. <laughs> Have you seen her? Have you? Bleeding, but no boo boos, no open wounds. Nope. Do you have any pets, Molly? No, and be careful, you're sitting on my friend. Oh. Molly has an imaginary playmate. Oh, what's your friend's name, Molly? Candace. Well, hello, Candace. It's very nice to meet you. Now, Molly, the nurse is going to take you and Candace out to the waiting room while I talk to your mom and dad, okay? Suzanne's not my mom. Oh. Okay, well, Suzanne and your dad are going to be two minutes. 
maybe three. So what do you think? Why was she bleeding? Well, my hunch is that it was probably just a bleeding nose. She's obviously far too young to be menstruating, but if it happens again, you bring her back in. Okay. What about the invisible friend? Uh, Michael, no. it's no big deal. Come on, lots of kids have them, right? Well, actually, 50% of kids have an imaginary friend at some point, usually at around age five, but that can vary. Molly's a prime candidate. She's got a great imagination, no siblings, and you guys just moved. But does it mean something's troubling her? She lost her mom less than two years ago. Molly is a healthy little girl. I wouldn't worry at all. She's gonna be through this phase before you even know it. So did you uh, have a chance to have a look at her? Yeah, well done. Bye, guys. Bye. See you later, Molly. Bye. Is here? Hello, Candace. Know what, Suzanne? What? Candace really likes you. She does? Yes. She wants to know if she can call you mommy. Of course she can call me mommy. I'd love that. Candace has had a very hard life. Oh? Okay, let's cover it. Let it simmer. Her other mommy died when she was 10. She died in childbirth. That's a very big word. Candace was very lonely and very sad. But she's happy now, because we're her family, and we'll love her forever and ever. Candace says you're the best mommy in the whole world, and she loves you a lot. Will you tell her that I love her, too? Okay, don't eat cookies. <laughs> the nasty alligator trips happen. What does Candace look like? Thin, long hair, this tall. What color hair? Brown with a blue ribbon on top. And what is she wearing? A purple dress down to here with an apron thingy on top. Like this? Yes. And the shoes? Brown with little buttons on the side. I'm going to put the two of you in a book that I'm illustrating. Let's see if you'll be immortalized. What's immortalized mean? It means that you'll live forever. Thank you, I love this. This is Beatrice. Oh, and her sister Elizabeth. This is Princess Penelope. Suzanne told me she's a bad role model. And this is Jane. Jane's my favorite. Do you have any dolls? Show me. Molly, are you dressed yet? Julia will be here soon. We'll be down in a minute. Are you sure we should be in here? All right. She's beautiful. What's her name? 
Hello, Emily. Maybe she and Jane can be friends. Bye. Tell me that's friend of your life. Hey, what are you still doing up here? Playing. I know this is your first time going to school with Julie, but you're gonna be fine. Hey, where'd you get her? In the attic, there's a chest full of toys. Molly, you really shouldn't be going up to the attic alone. I wasn't alone. Candace was with me. Hey, here, come on. Let's go. Baby, how are you? Good, good. Uh, you're coming home for dinner, yes? No, sorry, I was just gonna call you. I got pulled into a town council meeting. Oh, and, you, and you, you've gotta go? Are you kidding? The spotlight will be on yours truly. He'll be wowing them big time. Is everything okay? Yeah, yeah, uh, everything's fine. Okay, so uh, we'll just see you later then. Okay, bye, darling. Thanks, Julie. No problem. She's a gem. Thanks. Why don't you stop by for tea one afternoon? Oh, that'd be great. So, well, how was your day? I like my old school better. Yeah, I know, but you'll get used to it. Megan seems nice. She's okay. Mm -hmm. You okay? Okay, sweetie. 
I want you to go to bed, okay? Okay. No more talking. Suzanne? Yeah, Mom? Candace wants you to put the things back. What things, sweetie? The stuff you found in the attic. She wants you to put it back where it was. How did you know about that? Candace told me. But, <laughs> sweetie, Candace isn't real. She's pretend. Don't be silly. Of course she's real. She's sitting right here. I don't understand. How did Molly know about it? Maybe she saw it. You said she'd come up here. Look, all old houses have lots of junk. I wouldn't worry about it. Michael, it's not junk. It's a hex. And Molly knew about it. How did she know? And, and what about this room? I mean, what is this? Looks to me like a perfect spot for a nice little playroom. Come inside. It's horrible. And and why was it sealed up? Huh? I mean... Maybe um, the Oogie Boogie Man lives here. Don't laugh at me, okay? I'm sorry. I just think you're getting a little carried away. This is an old house, so this room was sealed up years ago. A lot of people sealed up old rooms to save on heat. Let's just get rid of this, okay? It's disgusting. No, you you can't do that. You, you, you can't just toss it. It's, it's bad luck. Suzanne, it stinks.
men think your only goal is to maximize the profits for the company. They really don't see how any of these changes are going to benefit. And try this approach. We're modernizing the operation to make sure that their way of life continues. When we fly in, we lift out only the trees that we want to harvest. That way, we leave the young timber to grow, so there's plenty left for their kids and their grandkids to harvest. I'll give it a shot. Thanks. Hey, John. I appreciate it. Okay, everybody, lunch. It's lunchtime. Come on, Molly, we gotta go inside now. Be there in a second. I shall buy baby on the tree toes. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bell breaks, the cradle will fall. And down will come baby, cradle and all. I'll go get this sweater, Mr. She just made that yesterday. I'm sure she. Hey, Bob. Hey. Hi. I didn't know you worked here. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, trying to be a useful member of the community. <laughs> yeah, I'm the on-call doctor here. Huh. Yeah, this is my old friend Dora. We're just going for a walk. Dora, this is Suzanne. I'm her daughter's doctor. Hi, Dora. It's nice to meet you. I think I saw you last week. Your daughter's very pretty. Oh, you met my stepdaughter. Mr. Hello, Candace. Oh, what a lovely name. Mm -hmm. Would you excuse me? Now, what's this going to be? Finish. Suzanne. Suzanne, wait. Suzanne. What? Was that some kind of a joke? Oh, of course not. Well, but how, how did she know about Candace? I, I have no idea. Well, did you mention to her that Molly had an imaginary friend? And she was acting like she could see somebody. Look, I'm sorry if she upset you. <sighs> I'm sorry. It's just... This is all just a little too weird. I mean, first Molly last night, and... And now this. I'm just... Wait, wait, what happened last night? Nothing. Forget it. Suzanne, tell me. Hi, Sally. She's napping. I gotta run. I'm late for another job. Great, thanks. Oh, could you just put these inside, please? Uh -huh. Thanks. Uh -huh. There you go. Thank you. Thanks, Lance. See you soon. This is gorgeous. Thanks. Michael made it. He'd do it full time if he could. But, you know, health benefits, security. And the drawings? They're beautiful. Thanks. I work for a publisher. Just trying to keep it going long distance. These are for a book of fairy tales. Hmm. You all in? Sure. Thanks. Hey. I found this in a bench in the attic. Part of the attic was sealed off like it was someone's bedroom. And the creepy thing is that Molly knew about it. She says that Candace told her. It's like some kind of old voodoo hex thing. Yeah, that's what I thought. But why corn? Oh, well, corn is a symbol of life, sustenance. It's used to um, feed the hex, make it more potent. I'd say this one aimed at the man. I guess this, this would be his hair. And, uh, and his fingernails. Personal artifacts are used to uh, give the spell more focus and strength. It's ugly stuff. How do you know about all this? No, oh, Dora. She's always been in this mumbo-jumbo. Growing up, she was the town eccentric, you know, reading our poems, that kind of thing. And do you believe in it? No. No, I think it can have a powerful effect on those who do. Okay, so how do you explain what's going on here? I mean, how, how did Dora know about Candace? She's always said that she had the gift, you know, psychic. 
she's scarily perceptive. Even more so now that she has Alzheimer's. Uh, maybe she picked up something from you. I mean, you act as if Candace is a real kid. Yeah. It's not just Molly. Hello, are you in the hall? We're in the kitchen. Hey, Michael. Doc? What's going on? I found Molly on the stairs. I woke up, but I couldn't find you. Oh, sweetie, I'm sorry. We were just in here talking. I thought we threw that out. What are these? Molly, Molly, don't, don't, don't touch that. I told her to put it back! What are you doing? Stop it! Stop it! Molly, 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 calm down, baby. Calm down, it's all right. Nice one, Suzanne. Goodbye, Doc. Suzanne, this woo-woo nonsense, it's making me crazy. That includes this imaginary friend. Why are you encouraging this? Michael, don't you think there's something going on in this house? You want to know what's going on? Someone planted this here to scare us off. Well, I won't be scared. Basically, they want more input. They want to have a voice in the restructuring. Every decision gets put to a vote. That's crazy, John. I'm here because it's my job to tackle these kinds of problems and offer workable solutions. If we get bogged down in committee meetings, nothing will get done. I'll be the third guy to come here and the third guy to fail. Yeah. Baby, what's wrong? Are you all right? I couldn't wait. I'm pregnant. What? Yes. Yeah, I know. I know. I was surprised, too. They say that the diaphragm is not 100% effective. I'm so happy. Michael, tell me how happy you are. Uh, I am. I'm happy, too. I am. Uh, I was thinking maybe um, you and me and Molly could um, go out for a nice special dinner tonight to celebrate her being a, a new sister. I don't think we should tell Molly right away. Why not? I don't want her to feel like she's being replaced. Michael, I love Molly. She's never going to be replaced. I know. Just let me tell her first, okay? All right. Yeah. Where's the babysitter? In the house. Where were you? Just, uh, out running a few errands. Sorry, Janet. I'm uh, gonna need a little more time. I thought you were almost done. Is everything okay? Yeah, everything's fine. In fact, it's it's better than fine. <laughs> Don't tell me. You're knocked up. What? How did you know? You sound like the cat who swallowed the cream. Hey, <laughs> congratulations. Thanks. And tell Michael, add a boy. I will. Bye. What are you doing? He'll see. 
If it moves in an oval, the baby will be a girl. It makes a straight line, it's a boy. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Let me give it a try. Oh, looks like it's gonna be a boy. No, wait. Huh? It's a girl. No. It's You're making fun of me. Stop it. <laughs> is bad, Suzanne. I should get you to the emergency room. Uh, no, it's okay. It's almost stopped bleeding. Molly, what happened? It wasn't me. Then how did it break? Candace did it. Candace didn't do it. Now cut it out. Suzanne is hurt. Michael, it's okay. Come on. No, no, it's not okay. Molly, you have to stop with this imaginary playmate nonsense. She's not going to take the fall for this. It was Candace. Why won't you believe me? Molly, Candace isn't real. You know that. She is so. She is real. She's right over there. How can you say that? Molly. This is getting way out of control, Suzanne. Molly doesn't know the difference between reality or fantasy anymore. Sweetie, come here. I want my daddy. It wasn't me, daddy. It really wasn't. All right. Okay. Candace got really mad. Why? Why did she get really mad, sweetie? She says you have a baby inside you, and you're hiding it from us. Is it true? Is there a baby inside you? Sweetheart, Suzanne and I were going to tell you very soon. Molly, are you going to have a little baby brother or a sister? I have a sister. It's going to be wonderful. Please don't be unhappy. I'm not unhappy. Candace is. Why, sweet pea? Why is Candace unhappy about the baby? Tell me. I, I really want to understand. She thinks you don't love her anymore. You said you'd be her mommy, and now you don't want her. <laughs> So I've evaluated Molly, and you were right. She has a very strong belief in her imaginary friend. Elaborate and creative than we normally see. I have a couple questions I need to ask you both. Molly's mother died two years ago? Yeah. She had breast cancer. I'm sorry. And you two met a year later? I know it seems like it happened fast, but... Suzanne and I met, and it felt right. We didn't want to just date. I thought a concrete step would be best for Molly, so... And how did Molly react to that? She had mixed feelings, I think, but fairly typical. So she accepts you as her stepmother? I asked her if she wanted to call me mommy, but... Uh, she said no. And I, I respected that. I, I, I mean, I, I'm not her mother. But that's why when she asked me if Candace could call me mommy, I thought it was a real breakthrough. Don't, don't you think? I'm not sure yet. You see, Molly's very aware of your own desire for your own child. She may have created this imaginary girl to give you the child that you're wanting. But now that a real child is coming, she may feel that her creation is being threatened. She may also have created this other self to express her complex feelings about you, Suzanne. Things that she needs to work through. I agree. That's why I didn't want to have another child right away. This pregnancy wasn't planned? Not by me. What is that supposed to mean? You think I got pregnant deliberately? That is so unfair. Michael, I have tried so hard 
to give and, and to do for this family and to reach out to Molly and Suzanne. We're just trying to lay out the undercurrents of the family. Well, maybe there's something more going on here. I mean, how how do you explain the fact that that Candace tells Molly things, or that, that weird things are happening, like the attic? How did you know about that? You guys talked already, didn't you? Suzanne, I think it's important not to overreact to seemingly odd occurrences. You see, Molly is already living with one foot in reality and one in fantasy. I think that everyone else, especially the adults in her life, they need to firmly differentiate between the two. Okay. I'm sorry, we're out of time. I'll see you both in a couple of weeks. Why did you do that? Why did you talk to her without telling me? We talked on the phone. That's all. You made me out to be some kind of hysteric. And how dare you suggest that I got pregnant intentionally? Suzanne, you're overreacting again. <laughs> you know, if you want Molly to start treating me like a mother, you need to start treating me like an equal parent. Dora. Dora? What is it? Wear this. It will protect you. I'm sorry. I was taking Dora to the dentist and she just insisted on coming by here first. It's okay. Come on, Dora. We're going to be late for our appointment. Sweetie, I'm really busy right now. Sorry. Pretty please, Sudan. Okay. Just for a little while. Go! <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ready or not, here I come. <laughs> Suzanne, beg it this way. Yeah. Suzanne. Hey, it's okay. It's all right, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. She, she 
got stuck in the in, in the garage. Bye! I'm sure it was an accident. Sorry. Bye! Bye! There was a girl named Candace who, who lived in this house about a hundred years ago. I found her, her journal pages up in that, that weird room up there. Couldn't it just be a coincidence that someone named Candace lived here once upon a time? No, no. The grave that Molly went and visited today, the, the, the people in the grave, the Brewers, they were Candace's parents. Candace Brewer was her name. All the dates match up. I don't, I don't care, Suzanne. I don't care about people in graveyards. I care about today. I care about my daughter. Look, Michael, there's something going on that Molly's looked into. I mean, even Rob's concerned. I, I called him and I, I asked him to, to see her again. Molly's not seeing Rob anymore. He's out of his death. I didn't make up what happened today. Candace is a real girl. I told you, Suzanne. I don't want any of this around my kid. From Rob or from you. I'm sorry, it's not my decision. I've been the one defending you up until now. Defending us? From what? As you know, the parents are very involved here. You will, of course, get a full refund. Half the fathers here work at the mill. Would that have anything to do with this decision? Look, I know it's hard to be accepted here, especially in your position. But the parents have noticed things about your daughter. They talk. 
The incident with Megan was the last straw. She's seven years old. How could you all just turn against such a young child? She's, she's going to come back here in the fall for regular school. Oh, screw it. I've had enough of this crap. It's a big improvement from last week, huh? It's beautiful. It's a, a lovely shade of blue. Dora. Hi. Hello, Suzanne. Hello, Candace. Listen, I don't believe in this stuff. No one does until it happens to them. A boy is coming. A boy? Yes. A good, strong boy. Okay. Supposing I do believe. Why is Candace still in the house? What does she want from us? A family. Love. Everything she didn't get before. She's scaring us. I don't want her in my home anymore. The problem is... You let her in. You gave her strength. You gave her a normal childhood that she never had. And now, you're taking it away. I didn't believe that she was real. I, she's not real. Sometimes they cannot leave. Sometimes they have to undo what happened to them. Tell me what happened, child. What is she saying? Something terrible happened, but she won't tell me what it is. She said it's not for me to know. Be very careful. Candace is very, very angry. Your daughter scared you last week coming to the cemetery. Hmm? Yeah, she did. Listen, um, it's it's odd. The people in this the grave, father, they, the Brewers, they used to live at our house. Brewers had a daughter, father. She's not buried with them. Are you sure? Yeah. In those days, uh, next of kin were always buried with their families. Do you know her name? Candace. Candace. Yes, here she is. I knew I'd seen the name. Why isn't she buried with the rest of her family? What is this place? This is unhallowed ground. Just means it's not sacred. Back then, sinners were buried here. These souls are on their own, I'm afraid. But she was only 10 years old. I mean, what could she have done?
suicide. That counts as a sin. Ten-year-old Candace Brewer was found hanged in her backyard on Wednesday night. Her father, Dr. Emmett Brewer, said his daughter was distraught following her mother's death earlier that day during childbirth. The apple tree. Hey, baby. Can I sleep here? Of course you can, sweetheart. Come on in. Ah, girl. There you go. Snuggle up. Mm -hmm. Where's Suzanne? I don't know, baby. Candace says she's with Rob. is just upstairs to the left. Yeah. I'm coming! What is she saying? What is it? It's so sad. What? What is so sad? Tell me, tell me. She said the baby won't be coming after all. Why would she say that? Candace says you're her mommy, not the baby. Go inside, Suzanne. Everything's gonna be okay now, Michael. I told Candace that she had to leave us alone. So... Okay, that's good. Okay, let's go inside. We need to rest. 
I'd like to leave a message for Dr. Barrett. When is she back in town? Okay. Have her call Michael Driscoll as soon as she can. Mr. Driscoll, we did everything we could, but uh, she's lost the baby. It's my fault. I made Candace real, and now she killed the baby. No, baby, no, it's not your fault. It's not your fault, honey. Nobody's fault. I could hear Bali. She was hysterical. She's been sedated. What? She's here. Baby. Mike, I'm so sorry. Baby, she's going to get through this, okay? You want to keep her overnight for observation. What are we going to do? Uh, I mean, how can everything just go so wrong? Everything's gonna be fine, sweetheart. Everything's gonna be fine. Uh. They said you can go home if you're ready. soon love and tell michael thanks for sending the galleys back we'll try again next time why did you send my work back you had no right to make that decision for me i'm sorry suzanne but i care about you you should be in bed work is the last thing you need right now isn't that for me to decide look at how upset you're getting you have to rest you, you have to try and stay calm i just had a miscarriage michael I should be upset. Why are you so calm? Because maybe someone has to be. Oh, for heaven's sake, just put them in! What are you afraid of, Michael? Finding out that there are things in this world that don't fit so nice into neat little boxes? Why are you attacking me? Don't you think that I feel bad? I lost the baby too, Susan.
Molly? Baby, it's time to wake up, baby. It's breakfast time. Mom? Stress, though. Do you want to come inside? I gotta get some Kleenex. Sure. What would drive a 10 year old to hang herself? Kids that age don't usually commit suicide. On very rare cases, they do. If they're pushed to the edge. Didn't the newspaper say that her mother died in childbirth earlier that day? Okay, so. She saw her mother die a horrible, painful death, and then she killed herself? What happened to the baby? I assume it died as well. well where is it? Probably buried with the mother. Then why wasn't the name on the gravestone? I don't know. Babies usually are. Even if they're stillborn. What if the baby lived? And if it did survive, then why did Candace, the big sister, kill herself? Dr. Barry, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Okay. Brain scan is clear. No tumor, no signs of epilepsy or other neurological problems. Oh, thank God. They've also ruled out a viral infection or an anomaly like a spider bite. You're saying it must be psychological. Yes. Why is she sleeping so much? I'm afraid she's slipping into a state of catatonia. But why? Why? Molly? Molly, can you hear me? It's Dr. Barrett. Molly. It's my fault. Candace killed the baby. I should have stopped her. Maybe that her guilt is consuming her. The part of Molly that was threatened by the baby coming. The part that she calls Candace. She may believe that those bad thoughts caused the miscarriage. What can we do? Well, I'm putting in a call to Benjamin Harding. He's a researcher at Berkeley. He specializes in these kinds of cases. We can't just stand by and wait. No, we have to somehow convince Molly that Candace has no power. We have to help her rid herself of Candace. I have to go. I'll get back to you tomorrow. Ben, it's Gail Barrett. Call me as soon as you can. I, I got a case for you that really takes a cake. <laughs> yes, this is Dr. Barrett. I'm taking care of Molly Driscoll, yes? I gave strict instructions about the medication. Is she agitated? I can't be any more clear. If there are any other changes, you can call again, but I do not want her speaking to Candace. <laughs> Mom? 
My baby. Hey. Baby, wake up. Hey. It's Suzanne. Hello, Mommy. been so worried about you. Sweetie, I need to ask you a very important question about your friend Candace. Yes, Mommy? How did she die, sweetie? What did she tell you? I'm not dead, Mommy. Of course you're not. I'm talking about your friend Candace. Did she have a baby brother or sister huh what happened on the day that she died I'm not dead mommy I'm not dead oh, hold me mommy please hold me baby. Ah! I'm not dead what is this get out of here now it's not get it's out not, of here it's not Molly get them Candace! out Candace What are you doing? What are you doing if you've gone completely mad? Didn't you just see her in there? Michael, that wasn't Molly. That, that was that was Candace. The, Candace has taken Leave over my... her alone. Do you hear me? Don't come back here again. And you, you son of a... Don't! Stop it. I'm your wife. I was just trying to help. Trying to help? This isn't helping her, Suzanne. This is killing her. Now, please. I have to take care of my daughter. You have to stop her. She's undoing what happened. She's a bad girl. Laura, tell me what to do. It's in the pages. Look more closely. Hurry. Dora, Dora, calm down, all right? Her heart rate's through the roof. Get her to the room now. Hey! I need a monitor in that room now. You okay? I have to help my father. Mama took father to Belmont. She says his wife was sick. Father came home today. He's very quiet. Mama says we'll leave as soon as the baby is born. Father O'Donnell is trying to help. Daddy. Oh, baby. You awake? I want to go home now. Doctor wants you to stay a little bit longer, okay? Please, Daddy, take me home. I hate this place. Please. All right, Papa. We're out of here. I thought you might be back. I looked in the old church records. Yes, there was Father O'Donnell. I found these letters he wrote, asking the Holy Sisters to take in Candace and her mother. There was terrible abuse in the house. I also found these. Candace's father was treated in a mental hospital. Belmont? Yes, that's it. He died there. Before he died, Brewer asked for confession. The priest was tormented. He wrote in his journals about his conflict, his guilt. Why? He thought Brewer had killed Candace. He hanged his own daughter. He hanged her? Yes. I believe he 
he did. Candace's father killed her. Candace needs to kill her father. Oh my God, Michael. Michael? Molly? Get away from him, Candace. He killed me, Mama. He tried to kill my baby sister. My mother died when she was born. Candace! I saved her. I took her far away from him. Then he killed me. He hanged me in the garden. Candace? I am not your mother, and he is not your father. You have to go, now. Michael, come with me, Mommy. Your mom is waiting. Can you smell her? No. Can you smell the daisies? Jump, Molly, hurry. Your real mommy's waiting. Suzanne doesn't love you. She'll push you out like she pushed me. Go see your real mommy. Mommy! No! No, Molly. You will see your mommy again. I know you will. Jump, Molly, jump! Jump! This is not the time. Don't you want to see your real mommy? Suzanne doesn't love you. You need... You need to live your life. Be with Daddy and me. Grow up and, and have children of your own. Jump, Molly! No. Jump! I need you. Molly, no! Don't listen to her! Stay with Daddy and me. Molly, no! Please. Jump! Let me love you, Molly. Jump, Molly! I love you, Zoom! to be very happy here. A few cans of paint, a little bit of elbow grease, and this is going to be the house of your dreams. Have you seen my sister yet? 
Have you seen my sister? It's okay, Mom. It's okay. Listen, I won't be long. Why don't you wait in the car? It's okay. I'm sorry. Don't mind her. She was an orphan. She was left in the church steps when she was a baby. She's always looking for her sister. Go around back. You're gonna love your big, beautiful backyard. Just look at those fruit trees and all this space. You're gonna have so much fun playing out here. Why don't we go inside? 